Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Enlightened Path with Kat. I want to welcome back those of you that have been to the previous shows and thought it worthy to come back and say hi. And for those that are new to the show, I'd like to thank you for checking it out and see what we've got going on. Uh, we have a different topic each week, so um, we'll get into the topic after a couple minutes. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about where I'm coming into you from. It's the Enlightened Path Holistic Center, and it's on Charlotte Street. It's 1494 North Charlotte Street. It's up by the Sunflower Cafe, if you're familiar with that. And for those of you that have never stopped into the center, um, stop in, check it out. We've got a lot of great things going on there. Uh, we have a lot of different events, and we also have a lot of different um, gifts and supplies. Uh, they range from uh, local made jewelry, candles, oils, um, knickknacks, a lot of different items. And we are running some specials this coming Friday and Saturday. Everybody's going out for Black Friday, but for me, black didn't work. So I'm doing Purple Friday. And for Purple Friday, we're going to have 10% off of all merchandise and gift certificates. So it's a great time to come in and think about some unique Christmas gifts. Or if you're not sure what to get somebody, gift certificates are always a good go-by. Uh, as far as the merchandise, we've got... Crystals, um, incense, uh, little statues, figurines, wall hangings, a lot of local made jewelry. Um, there's so many different items there. There's a lot of unique items, one of a kind items. Things that if you know somebody that's into the spiritual um, aspect, there's a lot of those items. But we also have a lot of the fairies and even dragons and wizards and a lot of different items. So there's something for everybody there. And again, if you're not sure, always go for the safe with a gift certificate. If it's 10% off of merchandise and the gift certificates, but if you wear purple, you'll get an extra 10%. So then it would be 20% off. We'll also have Jody there doing her reflexology and her tarot readings, and we'll have Nate there doing his tarot readings. Um, I would suggest, though, with those to book ahead. The appointments do book up pretty quick, so with those you'd want to call. Uh, you can call the center at 484-624-8095, or you can check on Facebook. We do have a Facebook page, and all of the events are listed there. All the activities are listed there. And you can message us um, on there. We'll also have website, and that's enlightenedpath-hc.com. That'll also have a link to our Facebook page as well, so you can get to it either way. But if you have any questions, again, just call or stop out and see what we've got going on. Now, that's just Friday. Saturday is also known as Small Business Saturday. It's a time to go out and support your local small businesses. And again, great time for stocking up on some Christmas shopping, or maybe you want to treat yourself to something. We are running a special that day as well. It's support your, not only supporting a local small business, but you're also supporting a lot of local artists because we do carry a lot of locally made items there. So Saturday will be 10% off of, again, merchandise and gift certificates. And the first 10 people in on Saturday will also get a free tote bag. So stop out and say hi. And there's no purchase necessary for the tote bag. So if you just want to stop in and check everything out, see what we've got going, you're welcome just to stop in. For the other events that we have, uh, we have a lot of regular events going on where I have different people in doing different things. Um, normally on a Tuesday, we have a meditation, although with the holidays, we're not having it tonight, but it's a twin heart meditation. It's about sending out world peace, world healing, and also a little bit for ourselves. It's uh, an awesome guided meditation. We, we have a lot, of, um, a lot of good people come to that, and it's very relaxing, and you feel like you've really done some good. So that's Tuesday nights from 6 to 7, although not tonight. Uh, it's a little hectic with the holidays, so a lot of people can't make it. So we're probably going to wait till next week and start it back up again. 
Um, we also on Tuesdays have Jody out also doing again her reflexology, uh, palm readings, tarot readings. Um, she's awesome. She does a variety of different things there. Wednesdays we have Nate out doing his readings and then we have um, Kathy out doing her pranic healing. Uh, it's very similar to Reiki but it's a no-touch healing. Uh, it's an energy healing. I've seen some amazing things happen with it. Um, stop out. If you just have questions, just give us a call. We'd be happy to answer any questions about it. Thursdays we have Michelle out doing gentle massage and we also have Barbara out doing tarot readings. Um, both of them amazing girls. Uh, stop out and meet them. I mean, even if you're not going to come in for a massage or a reading, you can stop in any day and meet any of our practitioners and see what they've got going on. And again, on Fridays, I, I mentioned earlier, um, it's not just for Purple Friday, but for every Friday, Jody and Nate are out. Saturdays, we have a variety of different things. I kind of float different events on there. Sometimes we have games going on. Um, sometimes I have different guest healers or readers in doing stuff. And once a month, we have a full moon drum circle. And we've already had it this month, but in December, it'll be on the 19th. It's um, always on a Thursday, closest to the full moon. We have it at 7 o'clock. It goes till around 8, 8.30. Um, but again, in December, it'll be on the 19th. We have different classes and workshops at different times. I have one starting December 1st. It's activating the third eye, and it's about developing your intuition. And that's going to be Sunday the 1st from 6 to 8, and then three consecutive Sunday evenings. It's a four-night class. And... Um, It'll be different exercises each week. We'll be doing a different meditation each week, and it's all about enhancing and building your third eye. So again, any of these events, you can find the information on, on the Facebook page. All the prices, times, dates, everything will be on there, and you can contact us to register for any of the classes or book any appointments, either by calling us or by stopping in or dropping a message. Now, if you have anything that you'd like to share during the show, there is a number that you can call in on. It should be at the bottom of the screen, but if you can't see it, it's 484-945-2605. And that's for any questions or comments for during the show. And I'm kind of hoping that we get a couple people call in today because today we're going to be talking about gratitude. This time of year, with Thanksgiving coming up and with Christmas, a lot of people, their focus is turning to gratitude. And you see it a lot on Facebook or people just talking about it, what they're grateful for. And what you are grateful for is very important. And I do want to talk a little bit about that, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the things that you forget to be grateful for. Sometimes there's negative things going on, and instead of cringing, there are reasons to be grateful for some of these things, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But I also want to talk about not just the things that you're grateful for, but I want to talk about something that's a little bit of a tougher question. I want to talk about the things that you're doing to help somebody else feel grateful. Um, some of the things could be dropping a couple dollars in the Salvation Army bucket, uh, donating toys to Toys for Tots or any other fundraisers that you've seen for Christmas. Daily things, giving somebody a compliment that may not normally get one, smiling at a stranger, opening a door for somebody. Sometimes it's just the simplest little things that you're doing that made somebody else grateful. And that gratitude that they felt, that could be the only gratitude or the only thing that they had or thought they had to be grateful for that day. G giving them a smile, making their day a little easier, making them feel good about themselves with a compliment. There's a lot of different things that you can do to help other people. And there's probably... A lot of things that you're doing every day that you don't even stop and think about. 
sometimes we get wrapped up in what we're grateful for and we tend to think that if we're focusing on what we're doing that we're full of pride or that we're letting our ego get too strong or it's not about bragging or you know getting people to pat you on the back that's not what I'm talking about I'm just talking about owning it I'm talking about owning what you did for yourself it's not going out and telling everybody oh guess what I did or this is what I'm doing or or waiting for the people that you're you've done it for to say thank you it's not about that it's about owning it for yourself it's about knowing that you've done something awesome and you should be proud of that it, it's not again it's not bragging it, it's being proud of what you did acknowledging how good it felt letting yourself smile about it if you're if you can't think of something that you've done recently to make somebody else's day to make somebody else smile or just to give somebody else something to be grateful for and they don't even need to know it was you that did it but if you can't really think of anything offhand then maybe it's time to change that up a little bit maybe thinking about that and realizing that maybe you haven't done something or anything that stands out that you can think of you've got all day to to change that you've got tomorrow to change that you've got the next day to change that and just doing simple little things can make you feel so good and when you can feel good about that you can feel your gratitude even more for myself and again it, it's not about the bragging it's not about patting myself on the back about owning it um, I've been doing as much as I can to assist with any fundraisers that are going on for needy families for Christmas um, monetarily I don't have that to give but I do have time I do have my own services that I do um, my readings Reiki sessions I can give my time and I can offer that up I can offer the space of the center I do have a tub there for an angel food or for an angel drive and that's for toys for kids toiletries things for adults things for teens they're very much in need of anything and when there are people that are in dire straits they're not necessarily thinking about the type of Christmas gifts most people may think about they may just be in need of something so simple you know a pair of gloves um, shampoo toothbrushes some of the simple things that many people take for granted maybe number one on somebody's Christmas list so I've put that up at the center and I've put it out there asking for people to stop in with donations and we've we've got a pretty good amount in there but we can always use more so for me that's something that I've done to hopefully give somebody else something to be grateful for so again if you haven't really thought of anything just take a few minutes and think about what you can do next time you're out shopping hold the door for somebody smile at somebody um, you see somebody's having a hard time reaching for something that maybe you can reach it easier reach up and grab it don't wait for them to ask just get it hand it to them there's so many simple little things that you can do and that's for strangers what about your family your friends there's so many things you can do for them as well just some simple little things something that would make you grateful is going to make them grateful 
So another thing that I mentioned earlier is things that we forget to be thankful for. Sometimes we see things as negative and we see them as a setback. A lot of times if we can turn that around and find a way to be grateful for it, it turns a negative into a positive. I found a couple poems um, about gratitude that I thought were very fitting. And both of these are by unknown artists. If I knew what, who the authors were, I would definitely give them credit. But the authors are unknown on both of these. So I just want to read these to you. Um, if you're looking for a copy of them, just touch base with me. And I, I did save copies, so I can email you a copy of it. Or you can stop out, and I'll print a copy for you. But the first one is, be thankful when you don't know something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be thankful for the difficult times. During those times, you grow. Be thankful for your limitations, because they give you opportunities for improvement. Be thankful for each new challenge, because it will build your strength and character. Be thankful for your mistakes. They will teach you valuable lessons. Be thankful when you're tired and weary because it means you've made a difference. It's easy to be thankful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for the setbacks. And the other one kind of falls on the same line but kind of a little more detailed on some of the negative things that we, we tend to um, grumble about. I'm thankful for the mess to clean up after a party because it means I'm surrounded by friends. The taxes I pay because it means I'm employed. The clothes that fit a little snug because it means I have food to eat. A lawn that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, and gutters that need fixing because it means I have a home. All the complaining I hear about our government because it means we have freedom of speech. The space I find all the way at the end of the parking lot because it means I'm capable of walking. My huge heating bill because it means I'm warm. The lady behind me at church that sings off key because I can hear. The piles of laundry because it means I have clothes to wear. The weariness and aching muscles at the end of the day because it means I've been productive. The alarm that goes off in the early hours of the morning because it means I'm alive. So I think we have to stop and think sometimes about gratitude. It's so easy to be grateful for the wonderful things that happen. It's easy to be grateful for our family and our friends, the beautiful car that we might be driving the lottery ticket that we might have won, the wonderful dinner that we're going to have on Thursday. But stop and think that maybe not everybody's going to have that great dinner. Not everybody is going to have that family to be with. But they still may find things to be grateful for. So Put a little perspective on gratitude. And also, when we are in a state of gratitude, when we find more things to be grateful for, it opens up a door. It opens up opportunities for more things to come into our lives to be grateful for. It's kind of like a snowball. I know I had talked a little bit about this when we did the show on manifesting um, a few weeks back. When we're in a state of gratitude, it lets the universe know that we're happy. We appreciate all the great things that are given to us, all the great opportunities that are provided for us. And when the universe sees us grateful for these things, wants to make us happy so it gives us more. When we're in a state of ugh, and why me and why can't I have that and 
how come she has that and I can't get that? Well, then we're kind of closing those doors. And the more we whine and bellyache and the thing negatively of everything, the less we're allowing into our lives. Well, you know, she's not happy that she's got heat. So why should we give her this? You know, he's not happy with the paycheck that he got. It's just not enough. So why should we give him more? But when you find the gratitude in these different things, like being grateful for that heating bill, because it means you've got heat, being grateful for that paycheck, even though it might not be as big as you would like it to be, be grateful for the fact that you have it. That's going to pay something. There are too many people out there that don't have that. And I've known people that have so little. They may not have a job. They have very little money coming in. They live a very simple life. And yet they tend to be the most grateful people that I know. They're so happy for every little thing that happens. They could be walking down the road and find a dollar bill laying in the road and you would think they found a hundred dollar bill. They're so grateful. And these people, when they're so grateful, they're so happy. And I think we all need some of that. We all need a lot of that. Thanksgiving's coming up and it is a time to be thankful. It is a day that's set aside to remind everybody to be thankful. But we need that all year, not just on Thanksgiving, not just on Christmas. We need to have that gratitude and we need to be thankful and we need to think about what we're thankful for. We need to do that every day, not just one day or two days out of the year. We need to do this all the time. We need to be out there trying to help other people be grateful. And again, like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be something that people know you're even doing it. You know you did it. And that makes you feel good. That gives you something to smile about. That gives something for the universe to look at you and say, well, oh, she did a great job. They'll pat you on the back. And you don't want to set out doing it because you know you're going to get something back out of it. You want to be out there doing it just because it's the right thing to do, because it feels good. Making somebody else smile, it, it just hits you in the heart, and it feels great. So even if it's something that you've done that nobody knows, you know, it was an anonymous donation, you know, if it was a toy that you donated, you know the smile that's going to be on a child's face when they open that. You don't have to be there to see it. They don't have to know you did it. You can picture in your mind the smile that that child's going to have when they open that gift. They may not get many gifts. And that may be the best thing that they got. So think about that when you're thinking about different things to help other people with. With, with gratitude. Um, now I did let our lovely Lisa over here know ahead of time that I was probably going to call on her a little bit. Um, I'd like to find out from Lisa, first of all, the easy question, some things that you might be grateful for. What are some of the things that you're grateful for that you're going to be thinking about? Not just Thursday, but I think every day. Well, I try um, when I experience like um, fear. I us it usually triggers um, gratitude because that's the only way I can deal with fear sometimes. That's a good point. Uh, like... Um, um, you know, 
<laughs> I'm afraid of, I always have this fear of losing my oldest son. Mm-hmm. And the only way I can cope with it is that I'm so grateful that I had him. And I'm so grateful for my experience with him. Because that's the only way I can counteract it. And that's a good point, too, because um, when we're suffering from grief, gratitude can help with overcoming right. the grief when you actually do lose somebody. Absolutely. And to, instead of thinking about the loss, to be grateful for the time that you did have with the loved one. Yeah. So, so I, I, I try on a daily basis when I experience fear. So for me, for Thanksgiving, um, I, I guess I would be especially grateful just, uh, just to be breathing, just to be alive, because it's pretty fascinating. Um, I mean, I have, I have so many things I'm grateful for. I'm, I'm just grateful for everything, you know? I'm grateful I got fingers and toes and eyes and arms. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I am. That's the way I feel, though. I, and I try and make sure that I say it and, and, and acknowledge uh, my gratitude every day for it, because it is pretty fascinating. And, I get, I, and I get, that's, yeah, that's another thing that, um, just the everyday things, the breathing and the fact yeah, that you woke up, and the fact that you've got <laughs> your hands and, yes. you know, you've got your eyes and you can hear and you've got your feet to walk on. Those are things that we should be grateful for every day. Yeah, every day. And, it helps you, and it helps you feel better sometimes when you're going through bad times. Just because, uh, like, if you see someone that's handicapped, I usually try to express gratitude for my own life. When uh, I see someone who's less fortunate, uh, I guess about 13 years ago, I quit smoking. So on a daily basis, I am so grateful that God uh, helps me quit smoking because I know that I would be feeling so horrible about myself, mm -hmm. not let alone physically, but psychologically, uh, it was taking a toll on me. I can't imagine having 13 more years added onto that. Yeah. So I'm um, when I when I think about oh my god am I gonna die of cancer because did I did I did I quit fast enough <laughs> you know because you know yeah. those thoughts go through your head. Oh, absolutely, I quit smoking too. Probably not yeah. quite as long uh, three years ago maybe. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I do is uh, when I when I have those thoughts, I immediately uh, when I when I at least it, realize that I I'm having those thoughts. I try and be grateful. I make sure that, thank God, I got to be able to stop then. And it wasn't now that I'm stopping. So that's what I, I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for everything. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. There are so many things to be grateful Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Things that we tend to take for granted on a daily basis. And if you practice it prior to being in a crisis, it's so much, because it's like training. Mm -hmm. So that way, when you're in a crisis, your mind and your body will automatically go to that space because it likes the feeling of gratitude when you can actually feel gratitude. Yeah. Because you're, that will be just like riding a bike. It will be your natural instinct is to immediately go to. So having gratitude every day allows you to, to, to build up a toolbox of skill. Mm -hmm. of and gratitude. I think, too, if you think back to when you were a child, or even if you look at other young children, if you don't remember so much, um, going back to when you were really little, gratitude was so much easier. You would be given something yummy to eat, or even an, an, a newborn baby, you know, when they are fed. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not know what gratitude is, but in a way they're grateful for, they're happy. They're happy that they just got fed. Mm -hmm. A little older, they get toys. They get a new toy. They're thrilled. You know, they're so happy that they got something new to play with. Absolutely. And then as we get older, that's when we start to take things for granted. And we need to get back to that basic gratitude. Well, yeah, because we have expectations of what we think should be happening. And that's, that's in there. Like, that's where the suffering lies in, mm -hmm. in our expectations. So. so the harder question, what have you done recently to allow somebody else or to assist somebody else in being grateful? Well, I did two things. 
a um, friend of mine from Roller Derby. She had posted something, but she had got pulled over by the cops. So she can't afford it. She can't afford the tickets that she got. So my husband is going to be trying to help her get her ticket fixed. Well, in the meantime, she didn't have any money for Thanksgiving. So myself and a whole bunch of us Derby girls, we got her uh, food for Thanksgiving. We gave her money. Uh, we gave stuff for the kids. Big, beautiful baskets and That's pies. Amazing. And so it was really cool. It made her cry. It's always good when you make them cry. Yeah. 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 I didn't need I, a I thank you. I didn't need a word. I just needed, like, the, the tear. Yeah. So it was, so it was really, it was really, really awesome. That, that is. So she was really grateful. You know, awesome. And she's like, you know, you guys made me feel so special, and that's what we wanted yeah. to do, because the thing is that this woman is taking care on a daily basis of another woman's four children because she's dying of stage four cancer. Wow. So she can't even go get a job because she has doesn't have the heart to tell this mom, I can't watch your kids because I got to go eat. <sighs> wow. So, so she's, and she didn't tell anybody this. So she's doing something to yes. give somebody else something to be grateful yes. for. And you in turn have done something to yeah. make her grateful for. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's how it comes back. You mm -hmm. know, you, she did something wonderful. And she's been doing it for a long time. And now On she's, a daily basis. Now she's in the hospital. So the husband has to stay with the wife. So she gets this other woman's four kids and. They eat all her food, and you know, that's a handful. And it's and she doesn't and on. she doesn't tell anyone. She hasn't said anything to anyone. We just know. Well, it's great that yeah. So it's really has. cool to be able to do that for. Her. Yeah, and it makes you feel good to know that you did something yeah. good for someone. Absolutely, because she is sacrificing her own time and her own life, and she does. So she deserves Absolutely. even more than what Absolutely. you can give. And the thing is, this lady is the one of the ladies that, you know, when you have a whole bunch of group of people, there's always the clicks. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. This is the one woman who was so nice to me and so kind to me and uh, just was above and beyond and is nice to everyone. She's not in that clicky thing. She just is really nice and welcomes everyone. So it was, it was nice. It was a pleasure to do something for her. That's just, that's it. It's a pleasure. Like to, we got so do. much out of it too. Right. We really did. We felt really good. Yeah. And that's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you said there was a second, you said there were two things. Well, it was kind of the police, the getting her ticket. We haven't gotten her ticket done. Okay. And they were actually two separate events. So uh, it was those two things. Were yeah. And them. they just so happened to have happened within a few hours from each other. Because uh, I had already started that, and um, I'm buying her uh, uh, a roller derby bag with her name on it. She doesn't oh, know that oh. yet. But I had already started that ahead of time because I see that she, she's struggling, mm -hmm. and everyone else has really nice derby bags, and she doesn't. So I thought, oh, I'm going to give her a Christmas present. But she's going to think I'm a lesbian or something, you know, because I'm, you know, I have no reason. There's no reason in the world for me to say, oh, I just got you something, you know, or she's going to think I'm a weirdo stalker chick. Yeah. So I called up a few of the other girls and I'm like, you know, maybe we can have a Pollyanna, but I, I need to have her. Right. So I can give my gift to her. And the bag is like three times what we're supposed to spend, but I don't care. It is what it is. It is what it is. As, give me an excuse, you know, to... To be able to give it to her. Because okay. I, I didn't have a reason. I mean, Christmas is a great time to practice doing these things where we can give other people things to be grateful for. So like I said about the Angel um, fundraiser, the lady that's running that, I mean, she does all this on her own. I think this is like the seventh, sixth or seventh year that she's been doing it. I do have information on the Facebook page. I don't have it with me. Um, but she's been doing this for quite a few years, and it started out small, and she's kind of expanded it. But she puts a lot of her own time into this. 
and a lot of her own expenses, I'm sure. You know, she's running around to different businesses picking the stuff up. She's taking the time to put everything together and make sure this family gets that and that family gets this. And it takes a lot of time. And I applaud people that are able to do that. I think it's amazing. It's not something that she's doing, again, for a pat on the back. It's because she finds joy in doing it. I've been dealing with another gentleman that um, he not only plays Santa Claus uh, and makes a lot of kids happy, but he also is um, very much involved or, or is running the uh, Operation Nine Reindeer, I think it's called. Um, but they also uh, kind of like adopt a family or two and they put everything into making an amazing, wonderful Christmas for a family that would not normally have had much of a Christmas at all. And I'm so honored to get to know these people and to see the wonderful things that, that they're doing. And then when I offer to do something for them as a thank you for everything that they're doing, they almost seem shocked that, you know, somebody would want to do something for them. <coughs> and it's like I said to them, it's like, no, you, you, you're doing a wonderful thing. You deserve to have a little something for yourself. So I, I do, I, I really wish I could do more. Um, and I probably could if I could squeeze a little time out here and there. I want to personally work on some of the smaller things, some of the real little things. Um, I do hold doors for people, I do smile at strangers, but I could do it more. And I want to reach out to more people that don't know me. I want to reach out to more people that I can make smile, even if it's the only smile they got that day. I, I want to be a part of that. I would like to get some feedback, some ideas for some kind of an event that we can have at the center. I'd like to put something together and I'm putting it out to you guys to message me, call me, or stop in. Um, I'd like to possibly maybe do a healing day or a healing and reading day and put it out there for people that would not normally be able to get that done, that could really use it, could really need it, and financially they're not able to do it. Maybe they've got kids at home and they don't have a sitter. So I'd like some ideas. I, I'd like to see what you guys think as to what we could do. Um, I've seen clinics where, you know, they've had like a Reiki clinic or something where people are welcome to come in. But I want to make it more than that. I, I want to make it like a whole day of having the doors open to bring in, I mean, maybe some of the local people might know somebody who's even homeless or really down on their luck for whatever reason and they could use a healing session of some kind. Um, so again, if, if you could reach out to me with any ideas or maybe you'd like to, maybe you're local and you do any kind of healing or reading work and maybe you'd like to pitch in with me and I probably do it on a day that the center's not normally open either a Sunday or a Monday um, but we would open it up for just that uh, so yeah if you have any ideas call me or message me and let me know you can reach me at the center 484-624-8095 you can message me on Facebook or leave a comment on there. Um, but reach out to me somehow. Um, I'd read off the email address, but it's kind of long. It'd be easier if you go to the website. 
and you can pull it off of there. Um, you can email me. Uh, but I'd like to get some ideas. So again, take some time to think about what you've done. Take some time to think about what more you can do. Maybe there's one little project, or, or not so much a project, but maybe there's one little thing that you'd like to, to work on, to focus on for that week, or that day, or have fun with it. Make a, make a planner or a calendar, and make Monday your smile at a stranger day, make Tuesday your hold a door for everybody day. Um, you know what's really good for holding doors? And it always it, it kind of boggled my mind because I could never figure out why. Whenever you go to Wawa, for some reason, people are so... <laughs> Lisa's over here nodding her head agreeing with me. They will run you over to get out... Yeah. In their cars, they'll run you over to get your parking spot. They will run you over to get to the gas pump. But when you get to the door... Everybody holds the door for everybody at Wawa. Weird. Yes. <laughs> the only store that I've ever experienced uh -huh. that in. I've yes. talked to a couple different people and they've noticed the same thing. At a Wawa, everybody holds the door for everybody. But you go to another store, it, chances are they're just going to walk and the door's going to slam right in your face. So think about making a day where... Everywhere you go, you hold the door for somebody or three or four people. You're just going to stand there and hold the door and smile at them as they walk in. So you're going to kill two birds with one stone. Smile and hold the door. Um, but take the whole week and plan out, like I said, you know, make Monday your smile day. Make Tuesday your hold your door open day. Uh, make Wednesday your compliment a stranger day. You know, you're just walking around and compliment somebody's hairdo or their coat or, you know, kind of be careful how you do it, though, because people can take that the wrong way. Um, but there's so many different little things that you can do, and you can make each day of the week a focus on one thing. And the more you do it, the more of a habit it'll become where you won't even need that little planner. You're just going to start doing it automatically all the time. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool to, to do that on a regular basis. You'll find yourself smiling a lot more. And you'll find yourself feeling gratitude for the things that you have a lot more. When you know you're helping other people and you know you're doing good, you're making other people smile, you're making other people feel good. It makes you feel good. Like I mentioned earlier, it really hits you in the heart. Your heart chakra, it just kind of opens it up. And when you open that up, you open that up for so much more. The more good you're doing, the more good you're going to bring in for yourself. I like to think of what you put out comes back to you many times over. Not just once, but many times. It may not be right away, but it will come back to you. So think about being more grateful for the things you normally complain about. Find the positive things in each of those things and, and find a way to be grateful for it. Think about the friends that you have. Be grateful for the friends that you have, but also think about what they may need. It may not be financial things. It may be your time. It may be somebody has um, husband and wife. They never get to go out because they can't afford a babysitter. So offer to watch their kids and let them go out for a night. Make a list of little things that you can do for different friends or different family members and 
cross them off one by one as you're doing them. Keep a journal. It's always good to, to have something that you can go back and look at later. So journals are great. Like I said earlier, when you, you know, maybe you can't think of anything offhand that you've done recently, you probably have. You probably have done quite a bit. You just can't think of it. And then you might feel bad because, wow, I really haven't done much to make other people happy. But if you have a journal, you can go back and look at that journal and say, oh, yeah, I did do that. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. So keeping a journal is good. And it gives you something to go back on. Or maybe, you know, you have a list in that journal and you haven't done certain things on there. So, oh, yeah, I forgot I have to do this yet. Um, no, I haven't marked this off my list yet. So then you can go out and you can do that for somebody. So this time of year is really good to start thinking about it and to start practicing it. It does make it easier when we've got Thanksgiving and Christmas. But don't let it stop there. Don't let it stop when Christmas is done. This is something that you have to keep going and you have to do this on a daily basis. And two, when you're doing it, you're setting an example for other people. If you have children and they see you do it, they're, they're going to learn from seeing you. It's going to become more of a common thing. The more we do it, the more other people see us doing it, and the more they do it, because let's face it, we've really become quite a self-centered society. And we've really gotten away from doing for other people because we do it and they think, oh, what do you want from me? We have to get over that. We have to just do it. It will grow. It will snowball. And maybe if we all take a part in it and we all have even just a little bit to do with it, maybe it'll grow to the point where we can get back to being more of a community. We can get back to being more grateful for the daily things and we can make a much better world. And it does just start with us. We, we have to create what we want and we can do that by getting out there and doing it ourselves. So get out there and make some other people happy, make yourself happy, and get back to living in gratitude. Be grateful when you wake up in the morning. Be grateful that you slept. Even if you didn't have a great night's sleep, you slept some. Be grateful you had a bed to sleep in. When you get up and you head downstairs and it's a little chilly, be grateful that it may be chilly, but you do have heat. You reach for that cup of coffee or your tea, whatever it is that you're reaching for. Be grateful for that because that's a great way to start your morning. Don't grumble about the job that you've got to go to because you do have a job. And I did read a little something that kind of made sense. Instead of always thinking about the vacation that you want to go on or the vacation that you need to take, I need a vacation, I need a vacation. Instead of focusing on I need a vacation and when am I going to get a vacation, create a world that you're happy in, that you don't feel like you need a vacation. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for the world that you're in. Be grateful for your surroundings, for your home. Get back to gratitude. It's going to make everything better for everybody. 
if we can all get back to gratitude just a little bit and spread it around, you know, get out there and help other people find that gratitude. Be good for you, be good for them. The more people that are smiling, the warmer this world's going to be. So let's get out there and create some smiles. Smile yourself because smiles are contagious. And uh, when we see other people smile, it makes us smile. So if you're smiling, it's going to make them smile. Wouldn't it be great if we were all smiling at the same time? Don't know if that'll ever happen, but it would be great if it did. The whole world. I'm not talking about just you and your friends. I'm talking about everybody. If everybody could just get out there and smile. So that's going to kind of pretty much everything I wanted to discuss today. Um, not sure what our topic next week will be, but if you like the Enlightened Path on Facebook, um, you'll probably see usually a few days before I'll put up there what the topic's going to be. If not, then just stop in and be surprised. Um, usually have a completely different topic each week, so join in. I do want to redo our um, palm reading show uh, probably after the holidays and also um, the one that we did on crystals. Those were really neat shows. There's a lot of great information on there. So I do want to get those back in here and reintroduce you to, to those. Um, in the meantime, after our show, there are some other great shows on the same station. So you can just leave it on and keep it tuned in while you're putzing around getting your dinner together or just sitting down with the family or friends. There's some great info on. We have Mystic Talks from 6 to 7. And then there's Heaven Talks from 7 to 8.30 and Beyond the Veil from 8.30 to 9.30. So you can just leave it tuned in all night and get some great information. Uh, a lot of great people doing some great work. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And again, get in touch with me if you have any ideas for that one event that I'd like to do. I'd love some feedback. Um, you can call me again, 484-624-8095, or just up into the center. And in the meantime, that'll bring our show to a close. I'd like to thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you next week. You guys have a great night.